MXTV. What's up, guys? My name is Aaron. I'm here with my friends Ben Carter and yeah. Tim Bassanio. We're What's taking up? this next episode off from Nicaragua. Super glad you're watching, and we hope you enjoy the show. So tell me, what in the world is going on with all of this play in Nicaragua? One of the backbones of the trip is playing, playing, playing with these kids. Tell me about it. Uh, for starters, it's exhausting because <laughs> you're hanging out in like 112 degree heat, 150 percent humidity if that's even possible, or you're kicking the soccer ball around for eight hours a day and your feet are bleeding and they're running around barefoot and you're like, this is impossible right now. But it's fantastic. It's like running around with your own children. You're running through this community with 60 to 100 kids and they feel like they're yours. You, you get to love on them just like they're your own children. Uh, and that's what they're longing for. They're longing to be cared for. They're longing to be loved. They're longing to just uh, curl up in your lap and just be held for a minute. Uh, and in that moment, when they love you back, it's really, really special. There's something significantly spiritual about playing that, that it's so easy for us to leave out. Nobody on the planet plays better than a child. And so um, as we grow up, we start to get farther and farther away from that. So we have to be reminded that what play is, it's not just, it's not just exercise, it's not just um, an activity to burn some energy and kill time. And, and that can be our perspective sometimes. Mm -hmm. Play is um, where so much joy comes in. Now you bring all of these kids out of their homes, uh, schools out, and you run down the street with them, you're stomping in puddles, you're dancing around, you're laughing, your uh, uh, play is at its finest. We really have found that it, it changes the whole tone of a community. When there's kids out in the street, when there's volume, when there's laughter, on one hand, it could be easy for people to just go like, oh, that's obnoxious, quiet down. Well, we go like, well, that's what the play's for. It's for those people, and, and from that they start to go, hmm, there's a little bit of life in that. And they may not want to say it, but they have to acknowledge it because yeah. when they were a kid, that's when they were at their finest too. So what would it look like if you were more deliberate with your walk with God? Maybe things might be a lot less noisy. Space is God's invitation. God has a space that He has created for us. He calls life. He invites us in to give us something better. John 10.10 10 says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Not I've come to threaten you to get you into line. Not I've come to exhaust you with a long list of demands. Not even I've come to primarily forgive you. But simply my purpose is to bring you life in all of its fullness. Kilometer 54, the area we spend a lot of time at, it's, it's maybe two miles, maybe three tops from the ocean. I mean, the beach is right there. And um, it's packed with fish. I mean, it's, it's the ocean. They've never even seen the ocean, yet it's, it's two miles away. And if they need to feed their families, their thought isn't, I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna throw a net out and ca catch a fish and bring it home and feed my family. That's not their thought. Their thought is, um, there's no pigs to slaughter to eat. We don't have food, and that's it. There is no thought of getting creative, going down to the beach, setting up nets, bringing the fish in up to the shore, casting a line out off the pier, but some of the people in Nicaragua haven't been taught that. So now that you're home, one of the greatest things uh, about being in Nicaragua is, is as soon as you get home, you can't wait to get back. What are some of those things that just continually motivate you? I've got to get back to kilometer 54. 
I think the biggest motivation would be it feels like we're leaving family every time that we get on that bus and drive away from that community. For us, the bittersweet is um, the, uh, the bitter is that we're not there now and we're, we're not going to be there next week. The sweet is that we will get to go back. And I think that's just the unique nature of that relationship is we have to be honest about what it is. We're not full-time missionaries in Nicaragua. These are people that we've spent lots and lots of time with. Um, we've lived life with these people. Uh, we've watched their children grow up. Um, we've been going there that long. We get to walk into the opportunity to go down there when that door is open. They know that that relationship's there, and that's the most exciting piece for us. It's, it's so compelling to go back to see the people that we love, uh, these families that, um, that know us, that know our wives, that know our children. And so there's that challenge of acknowledging our limitations, but celebrating our strengths and what that turns that relationship into. When we're asked why we go, one of the first reasons that we'll tell them is, is, is it's so that we can go play with the kids. And they go, well, we can play with kids anywhere. Like, what are you really going down for? What are you building? What are you creating? Like, what's, like, show us something. What can we put our hands on that, that shows us what's happening through what you're doing in Nicaragua? And we go, we'll come down and play with the kids and watch what it does to the community. It changes things. It brings joy, and, and from that position of joy, people got to start going like, what's different about that? Where's that come from? What's missing here that I wouldn't have otherwise if all of a sudden that didn't come into the picture? And you got a picture too. This is a place where apart from some of that, uh, joy isn't always the easiest thing to come by. It's hard because when you go down there culturally, you don't see parents at play. Uh, they're not out in the streets running around with their kids very often. It's just uh, culturally, it's a little bit different. Uh, we see some of that in the States as well, but, but down there you won't see a dad running down the street swinging his kids around. You'll see him walking them to school and you'll see him walk them home. Um, and then you'll see them just hanging out at their house. But over the last couple of years of going there and being obnoxious with play in a beautiful way, um, we've gotten to see some dads over the last couple months, last couple years that have really gotten excited about just spending time with their children. They've seen the joy that it brings to their kids and they want to be a part of that. Um, and so that's been a really beautiful thing to watch these dads step out kind of in faith to go, this is a little risky. Like my friends down the street don't do this, but I guess I'll give it a shot. And so now you see them taking their kids, blowing bubbles, letting their kids take face paint and just turn a brown mesh all over them because there's 55 colors on their face. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing to see a community be revitalized by play in a place that can be so dark and gloomy um, with the oppression of possibility of no hope. And now this play comes into place and allows this playful, hopeful spirit to come into that community. We're always, it seems like, looking for the measurable things. And we go, well, just spending time relationally isn't, isn't measurable. Uh, but building something's measurable, literally. Uh, but when you're just say, you, well, you're just, you, you, you run around this, you face paint here, and you laugh there, and you puddle jump here, and uh, how is that measurable? Uh, it's when all of a sudden, all of these kids' mothers are surrounding you saying, thank you. Thank you for coming here and just playing with my kid. Nobody plays with my kid. When are you coming back? The kids absolutely love it when you guys are here. Now all of a sudden it wasn't just going and playing with the kids. While all these influential adults and people in the church and uh, ministry leaders stand aside and watch, they're saying, ah, we see what that engagement has done here because these are our families. And that means more than anything. Mission X Television. Music. Message. Mission. Listen, pay attention, man. Get a little closer and really soak this in. Because I got something that's going to help you. I bet it's in that place where I give him an, an all access pass, permission to tour, to manage, and completely rebrand my heart 
he just wants to be that loving father that he is to really just wrap you in his arms and say, I'm here, I love you, and I've got this. Uh, him guiding you, him, him showing you the next best thing to do, the next right step. Your life is, is uh, brand new, washed clean, not, not just polished up, but it's brand new, man, brand new life. What do you think is going on in the hearts of those kids? What's happening with them during this play? I think the first thing is it, it creates a, a connection, just a starting point. So at the very basic, it's just these random people from America coming down there. They have no idea who we are. They don't know our stories. They don't know anything about us in the very beginning. And so it's that open door. Um, that first connection where a relationship can kind of start to begin and start to grow. Um, and so for them, I think it builds trust. They get to see who we are, who our character is. Um, if what we say is true, um, they get to find out how honest we are, how vulnerable we are through play and through time spent. And so I think inside of those children, they, they're going, wow, like I'm being loved right now. I'm being cared for. Uh, I'm being heard and listened to, not just told what to do and how to do it, but I'm also being heard, and I think that's a special thing. At its finest point, at the most uh, reducible moment of your life, it's gonna go back to when you were a child. At some point when you were a child. And so, if anything, we hope to just plant, plant these memories in some of these kids, some of these families, give them a, a glimmer of, of hope, uh, because who knows where they'll be down their road 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Um, they get to look back and go, hey, there was a picture of what it was like to be loved. God is with you. He is inside of you. He's going, he's going to walk on this journey and lead you. He's going to get your back. He's going to bring people around you to help you with everything that you've struggled with. If you're thinking, what do I do now? Where do I go next? It's okay. Help is on the way. I would encourage you to get plugged in. Look for a local church in your neighborhood. Look online for local churches in your, in your area and share with them what you've just done. Contact us here at MXTV. Email us, reach out. It's the best thing you can do. There's somebody out there that wants to help you and that God will send you to help. Trust me, we can't do this on our own and we are never on our own because we are with Christ. Christ is with us and He will send people, okay? All right. Our hope is to continue to go back or at least create um, an integrity for whoever would go behind us we want to help recreate the culture of, of what it's like to not be called to live long term somewhere, but to go and serve with the resources that you have, to start with the question, how can we serve you? How can we love you? And simply in the time that we have with you, what does that look like for you? We're here to serve. Um, I, I fear that that's a question that we don't ask enough. And in the whole grand picture of missions, more specifically short-term missions, that's the only question we need to ask. Yeah. How can we serve you? Sure, we'll still put wells in, we'll build churches, we'll build homes, we'll, def we'll provide food, we'll, we'll, we'll address the medical needs and certainly um, the spiritual needs of communities around the world, but not if they don't need it. And so, so we'll lead with questions and humility and I think yeah. that's, I think that's really um, the next chapter for how the church serves the world. You've mentioned this love story of Jesus Christ. Uh, man, what in the world are you talking about? I mean, uh, maybe I've heard of Jesus and I've heard of a love story, but what is this love story of Jesus Christ? The, and that word gospel is, is such a, it can be such a church word or such a, um, uh, a cliche word. When we say gospel, we, we, 
We're talking about the love story of Jesus. Well, what, what is even the love story of Jesus? Some people go, well, I've read the Bible. Like I, I've seen some things in there, but man, my, my life sure doesn't feel like a love story. Right? And, and when we're talking about it in this context, we get to see that love story uh, of Jesus played out Um, certainly in our lives, through our lives, but then to different reaches of different parts of the world. So one of the things that we have to acknowledge, that everybody would acknowledge, is that there are difficulties in life. Um, That life doesn't, it it, it doesn't just flow flawlessly 100% from year one until the end. Uh, We will walk through pain, there will be loss, there will be suffering, there will be question marks and doubting, and and there will be sickness and illness and disease, I mean, and you walk through all these things and lives will be taken, there will be battles, there will be um, conflict around the world, I mean, not just from my life, but on a global perspective, um, uh, we live in the midst of a flawed world uh, full of pain and suffering. We have to acknowledge that. The love story of Jesus comes in and it gets to say, um, but I love you enough to rescue you from that so that that pain and suffering that exists around you, that by the way, it will not go away. It's the great conflict that we live in between good and evil, between Christ and his enemy. Um, But the love story of Jesus says, uh, it, it, it is literally Jesus coming along. He comes into the scene in the midst of a world that is Um, that is lost, that is hurting. And he says, I will make a way so that you can be rescued from that. I will become a sacrifice that needs to be made for that. And that by me, we will all be able to be rescued from that. And in all of that, that's a picture of hope. The hope is, in the love story of Jesus, um, that we, we don't have to be stuck in uh, uh, as a human being spiritually, I don't have to be stuck and crippled by for the rest of my life what's happening around me in this broken world. But the hope comes when I get to acknowledge, and it's only through Jesus, I get to acknowledge that that may continue to happen, but my uh, the value in my life, the worth in my life, um, and what hope looks like for me is in something eternal, and that's through Jesus and it's not in the outcome of all of these things that are happening around me, it's when I get to fully acknowledge that this is all going to come to an end and it might, it might sting when it does. But that I get to be made so much more because Jesus is so much more and that He did for us what we could never do on our own so that we could be made whole, complete, and have hope in Him. My name is Tim Bassanio. Thanks for watching MXTV. Uh, if you ever wondered why we do MXTV, it's right here. Here I stand in Nicaragua, um, a, a third world country, and people can hear God's word represented to them in their culture and their language. And um, thank you for helping us bring MXTV to places just like this. MXTV UK. Music. Message. We won't get Mission. Well, I just think pain without Jesus is hopeless, and with Jesus, there's victory. I've found the key to deep contentment. My save is still breathing, I still hashtag it and tweet it. My passion for MXTV UK is that the hope of Jesus would reach the hearts of this generation. Our ultimate goal is that people would find freedom from their past, peace in their present, and hope for the future. MXTV UK, a voice for this generation. Tonight.